please welcome to the TEDxSF stage, Patrick Lee. I used to think global health was about helping poor people in places like Liberia. Then I learned about healthcare in the US, the way it leaves the poor behind, costs way too much, and doesn't keep us healthy. I realized there's plenty of global health right here at home. Tomorrow's US global health leaders will face two sets of challenges. What the US can do to advance the health of the world's 7 billion people, and what the US can learn from places like Liberia. Let me tell you about two patients who taught me the value of using global lessons to rethink healthcare right here at home. At Mass General Hospital in Boston, I cared for a homeless HIV-positive man who I'll call Paul. Paul's released from jail without health insurance or a primary care doctor. Despite our best efforts, he wound up cycling from street to hospital, back to street for six long months. Paul eventually died in intensive care, leaving behind a health care bill of well over a million dollars. Five years later, in rural Liberia, I cared for an HIV-positive woman who I'll call Evelyn. Evelyn was brought home to die because her mother was too poor to nurse her in the hospital and still earn enough to feed her other children. Evelyn had AIDS, but she would have died of extreme poverty. Instead, a community health worker nursed Evelyn in the hospital, helped her take her medicines at home, and connected her to a women's cooperative where she learned to sew children's uniforms. Now Evelyn is thriving. The cost of her care, about $300. Paul's care in Boston cost over a million dollars, and he died alone. Evelyn's care in Liberia cost $300, and she not only lived, but has gone on to improve the lives of her younger siblings. What made the difference? Paul received excellent care every time he came to Mass General, but he had to fend for himself once he left the building. His care was reactive, with acute treatments that did not address his underlying homelessness in isolation. Evelyn received personalized care from a team that included a community health worker and a women's cooperative. Her care was proactive and went after root causes of disease outside the four walls of the clinic. Can the U.S. learn from Evelyn's experience? According to the Institute of Medicine, the U.S. wastes $750 billion each year on care that does not improve health. Part of that waste comes from the difference between the kind of reactive care Paul got and the kind of proactive care we gave Evelyn by pairing her with a community health worker and giving her a way out of poverty. The good news is people are already applying Evelyn's lessons here in the US. An example of community health workers is Iora Health. By doubling their investment in primary care and pairing every single patient with a community health worker, they saved 25% of total health costs and erased health inequalities between black and white patients after just one year. An example of root causes is health leads. They have 1,000 college student advocates who fill prescriptions for basic needs, like food, housing, job training. Because of health leads, doctors who know that a patient's most important problem is hunger or homelessness have a way to treat that directly. Evelyn's lessons are already taking root in the US. That's the good news. The bad news is they're not at scale. Why is this? Part of the problem is getting the incentives right. Fortunately, US health reform is changing the rules of the game. Pretty soon, it'll actually be good business to keep people healthy. Imagine that. But better incentives are only part of the answer. We need a workforce that's ready to do things differently, that's willing to try new models of care because they know what's possible. And we need leaders who have actual experience implementing Evelyn's lessons here in the US. These leaders will build the next Iora Health, or Health Leads, but they will also drive adoption by larger systems, enabling these pilot programs to go to scale. As U.S. health reform takes hold, now is the time to invest in a new generation of health professionals with a global mindset. I co-founded the Global Primary Care Program at Mass General as proof of concept that we can teach these lessons to tomorrow's doctors. We do two things differently than other global health programs. First, we put primary care front and center. Long-term relationships really matter. Our residents spend eight months over four years at a single health center in Uganda. This enhances the value we add to our Ugandan partners. It also teaches our residents how systems change over time. Second, we put the focus of global experiences on learning how to improve healthcare right here at home, in Chelsea, the poor city of Massachusetts, where we begin to apply Evelyn's lessons to patients like Paul. Patients released from jail in Chelsea are now seen by our team within a week. We get them insurance, food stamps, whatever they need to stay healthy, 
then we address their medical needs. Do tomorrow's doctors actually want this training? They do. Last year, we received over 600 applicants from 86 countries for just two spots. I got to interview 40 of these amazing individuals, and what I heard from them has me fired up about the future. They talked about global health abroad and global health at home in the same breath with equal passion and conviction. They want to dedicate their lives to serving people like Paul and people like Evelyn. They don't want to have to choose between them. I think there's something powerful happening among students across the country. In the last decade, they had tremendous optimism for global health abroad. And that's where they thought they could make a difference. The response we saw at Mass General tells me that they're hungry to bring that optimism back to the U.S. Our job is to harness this generation's optimism for global health abroad to solve the challenges of global health right here at home. So what's the next step? I think our work at Mass General can serve as a blueprint for teaching these lessons to doctors. There's no shortage of demand, and if history is any guide, institutions will develop similar pathways in order to compete for the best students. The next challenge is how we teach global lessons across the health professions, and here's what I envision. Every doctor, dentist, nurse, pharmacist, social worker, health coach, and community health worker across the country should learn about global, local innovations that are already transforming care in the U.S. The goal is to open the door to new ways of thinking by showing what's possible right in our own backyard. Healthcare is a team sport. Everyone needs to get it. But there's a difference between knowing and doing. So some of these health professionals should get advanced training in global primary care, learning how to innovate systems under different conditions. They should do this in teams and across disciplines. These are the folks who will lead from the front. The dream is primary, proactive, whole systems care for all. U.S. health reform is changing the rules of the game. It's a brave new world. Today's students are hungry to engage. We can, we must, harness the optimism and commitment of this generation to solve the challenges of global health right here at home. My message to all of you, harness optimism. Solve global health at home. Thank you.